So here we're going to look at the organization of vascular plants. The three images here all show vascular plants, even though they fall into different categories or subsets. These would be seedless vascular plants. These would be what we call herbaceous vascular plants. These would be woody vascular plants. So looking in general, plants contain growth zones of unspecialized cells called meristems. There's a primary growth is initiated at the tips of roots and shoots by the apical meristems. The growth of these meristems results primarily in the extension of the plant body. So we're looking at where we're growing taller. Secondary growth involves the activity of lateral meristems. This is con continued divisions of their cells results in primary thickening of the plant body. So we have a thickening. In the image here, a primary growth would occur here, 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 and we also can't forget about the root tips, is where all the primary growth would occur. Secondary growth, because we're looking at the lateral growth, would be example would be the tree trunk. The trunk would be thickening, where our primary growth would be those actively growing and dividing tips. So these epical meristems, tissue in most plants containing undifferentiated cells, found in areas of growth, such as the growing tips. Now, many people think and associate with the, you know, the shoot tips as, a, as an apical meristem, which is true, but we also can't forget about the root tips that occur below ground. If you remember in the lab that we did, we looked at um, cells going through high rates of mitosis, and these were uh, root tip cells. Same thing is happening here at the shoot tip, and both of these are considered apical meristems. If we flip back for a second, remember this is all involved in primary growth phase, growing with the height of the plant. Continue with that, this primary growth is make, makes plants longer or taller. Again, it's that vertical growth, but also please don't forget about the growth that's also occurring below the soil line there. And this is our primary growth that's occurring. We're going to transition and relate to its secondary growth here in a moment. Right now we're just focusing on that primary growth. Getting the secondary growth, um, later vascular plants developed a new pattern of growth, which a ring of cells could divide around the periphery of the plant. Yeah, this is the end region of the plant. Secondary growth allows for plant stem to increase in diameter, the thickening of that. The product of secondary growth is wood, as we see here. These, these would be examples of what we call woody plants, versus herbaceous plants that just grow like a tomato plant. Now these lateral meristems, there's two types here. First one being vascular cambium, and this gives rise to thick accumulations of secondary xylem and phloem, located right here. That's our vascular cambium. Our cork cambium forms the outer layer of bark on both roots and shoots, and that's layers located right here. So we see the vascular cambium distinct separation between these two regions here. And our cork came in a little bit harder to see, but you can see there is definitely a distinctive line here. Going into a little bit more detail on the vascular cambium, uh, in stems, secondary growth is initiated by the differentiation of the vascular cambium. So this thin layer of actively dividing cells is located between the bark and the main stem in woody plants. And this is running between the xylem and the phloem. So here's our xylem, and here's our phloem. And we see this thin layer here is our vascular cambium. Cells that divide from the vascular cambium outwardly, and this is towards the bark, become secondary phloem, so that would be in this region here. And cells that divide from the vascular cambium inwardly, towards the center of the tree, would become secondary xylem. Now it's important to remember that our xylem here, is, if you remember we, I showed you in some other videos what it looks like, tends to be this larger, more open region. Those, those cells are dead at maturity. Phloem is a lot more sugar transport. It's located in woody plants closer to the bark region. They're much smaller. The vascular cambium is what's kind of separating the two here, and depending on what side you're on, depends what you're ultimately going to become. In this side, we're developing a secondary phloem, and towards the inward part, our secondary xylem. That core cambium, as we see pictured here and zoomed in right here, while the vascular cambium is being established, a second kind of lateral cambium develops in the stem's outer layer. This is the cork cambium. This consists of plates of dividing cells that move deeper and deeper into the stem as they divide. Outwardly, this cambium divides to form densely packed cork cells. Inwardly, this cambium divides to produce a layer of parenchyma cells. 
So as we see here in this image, to make it, try to make it as simple as possible. There's a piece of wood we cut in half. The cork and cork cambium are located very close to the surface. They together make the periderm, and along with the secondary flow makes the bark region that you might be familiar with seeing. The vascular cambium is located a little bit more inwardly, and that secondary xylem, you're definitely getting closer to that center portion of the tree. That periderm, the cork of the cork cambium, and the parenchyma cells collectively make up what's called the periderm. The periderm is the plant's outside protective covering. The term bark refers to all the tissues in a mature stem or root outside the vascular cambium, as we see here. So all of this would be considered the bark, not just a very thin layer here. Wood is accumulated secondary xylem, so the true part of wood would be the interior portion here. Technically, the bark, as we may associate it as with wood, is separate and distinctive from the wood. You wouldn't make a 2x4 that contains bark, those get that portion gets shaved off, and the secondary xylem, which is the wood, is what's used for structural support. Rings of a tree, because of the way this is accumulated, wood often displays rings. The vassar came and divides more actively in the spring and the summer than in the fall and winter. The growth rate differences are reflected in alternating rings of growth of different thicknesses. You can see that evident here. A lot can be told from a, a tree here. You can see in its early part of its life it grew very quickly. You can see the large space between the rings. However, at this point of its life, you see the rings are a lot closer together, indicating growth from year to year was much slower. We don't have to cut down the tree to get an assessment of the tree rings. Inside cambium becomes um, the xylem. The outside cambium and outer cells becomes the phloem. And we can take a core of a tree. So as you see here, we take these cores and we just simply pull out a core. Tropical plants, though, may not have distinctive rings, as we see here. Also, rings may vary in size, so these are good questions to be thinking about. Remember that we said that in the Northeast, our plants, our trees tend to grow slower in the fall and winter, and faster in the spring and summer. Tropical plants are going to grow more consistently, indicating they may not have these divisions or rings that develop. Rings may vary in size because of environmental factors and what that tree might be experiencing. Once we know that each ring develops after a year, and we know the year the tree was cut down, in this case 2017, we can trace back and determine how old that tree is and when it may have been first planted. Here we just have some important um, historical kind of uh, points of interest uh, throughout the different years that this particular tree was growing. And here you see the different tags that can mark different rings on the tree. So I pose the question, history of a tree stump? What was going on with this tree? We could see there's a lot more growth towards this upper region than it was down here. This could be, there could be shade on this portion of the plant. It could be more competition. There could have been more sunlight on this side, easier to grow, and that's why you could get the differences here. So it's important to look at a tree stump, and it can tell you a little bit of the history of what that tree experienced as it was growing throughout its life cycle.